a lot of people say that the passage from the um, ABC Islands around to um, Colombia from Santa Marta and Cartagena is one of the worst five passages you'll ever do because of the wind and the sea state and also dodging lightning storms depending on the time of year. Well this is the time of year there's a lot of lightning storms and um, we are heading from Santa Marta to Cartagena. Um, the other thing to add into this is the river that comes out by Barranquilla. Uh, there is another hazard because you get a lot of logs and all sorts of stuff coming out the river which you've got to dodge so you only do it by daytime. Now would you go on this passage if you knew about this or would you just leave your boat in Santa Marta and get the bus? That was our dilemma but we decided to take our boat and sail it. You and me that we share is as deep as the sea No matter how rough things may come to be You and me, we're family Sing ho, hey, long for the ride Ho, hey, I'll stay by your side to Cartagena. We're trying to dodge thunderstorms. We think we've got the best weather window according to Predict Wind. Um, it's, it has a low cape value. Uh, wind has got a scattering of thunderstorms but they don't look too heavy so fingers crossed it's all going to be fine. So this morning we had an early start. Uh, five o'clock the alarm went off and uh, we're heading to Cartagena. Cartagena. Um, there's a few hazards on the way. There's uh, a lot of debris comes out of the main river So you've got to give that about a two-mile berth. There are lots of logs and debris that's coming from the uh, interior um, What else is there? There's obviously the thunderstorms which are kind of a perennial hazard around this part of the coast um, We've been looking at several different weather forecasts and uh, sort of picked out one moment uh, The other guys have gone ahead. They went ahead yesterday and uh, we're okay um, But we were a little bit more cautious um, there is a, an anchorage on the way if we get caught out, but apart from that we're doing okay. Uh, the current hasn't kicked in yet, that's going to be against us. Uh, but the winds are favourable this morning and uh, it's a beautiful view. You can see the, uh, the city with the mountains in the background and the, uh, the sun breaking through the clouds and it's, uh, it's a really spectacular sight. You can't really capture it on camera, but uh, it really is uh, fantastic. This big tanker is called Golden Energy. That's fantastic. It's just what we need for this passage. Okay, so we're just coming close to the mouth of the river. Um, well, we're passing through it and um, yeah just trying to get through it as quick as possible and I think a lot of this stuff floating around won't be so bad on the other side because the, the current's going this way so once we're past it the, um, we'll get around the corner and we should be able to sail a bit easier. So we've decided on something new and um, whenever we have a disagreement we're going to actually start capturing it on camera because usually we only put things on camera once a decision has been made. Now We've had a disagreement at the moment, we've had a bit of an argument on the best way to get around this corner. My feeling was we go further out and even though the current's stronger, it will give us a, a wider sailing angle, a wider sailing vector for the second part of the journey. How do you feel? Yeah, my view is, yeah, the further out we go, we're adding extra distance. We're also going to get a much stronger tide. So what we gain on maybe a bit of sailing after, we're going to lose on that. So my I feeling mean. is the wider um, vector we give ourselves, the more options we've got for sailing and the more options we've got. So less engine time, more sailing time. And also we give the river a wider berth because as we've noticed, there's a lot of debris in the water. And we want to clear that as much as possible. I'm, at the moment, I'm leaving um, about four miles away from the mouth of the river. Um, some people actually say you can go in close and get across quicker. I've, I've read that. And some people say go further out, but it takes you longer to get across. So I'm kind of estimating four miles feels fairly 
Oh, okay, I can see everything coming out. Um, Hold on, you can, see, you can see the line in the water where the, where the river water meets the sea. Is that the point? Yeah, this is cloud. That was just a cloud. So these are the many uh, disadvantages of having two skippers on board and when they don't agree. Uh, then gender politics comes in and the woman always wins. No, that's not true. I mean, <laughs> See, we can the only other thing is, is, on the morning as we set off on this journey, while Woody was having his nap, I was up here making every effort to get us through this bit in daylight past this river. So, that's the argument for today. Stay tuned, there'll be many more. GoPro off. GoPro. <laughs> GoPro turn off. GoPro switch off. GoPro stop recording. Yeah, so we're getting closer to the river now and there's all this stuff coming out. Um, not really logs, but more kind of these um, mounds of kind of grass and kind of mini islands. Underneath that island over there, I bet there are hundreds of fish, like, it's in the middle of the ocean and obviously those plants can survive in salt water, so that could be any, that, that could go anywhere. But yeah, this is the evening coming up, it's a really nice sunset. So the boys have been pretty much playing computer games most of the journey. It's Sunday, so yeah, strictly they don't have to do anything else really, but um, a bit of a shame. I always miss, miss it when we don't do other things, but then I was tired and so whatever. What have you been doing all day? We've been looking at the sunset, looking at how <laughs> nice it looks. And what yes. else? I'm doing a tiny bit of screens. I only a tiny bit, like all 10 day. minutes. And then we shall be there tomorrow. Our ETA is about six o'clock. So uh, as the sun comes up, we will be arriving in Cartagena. Hello. So this is the night watch and uh, this is the first time I've used the GoPro night watch and it's very bright so uh, I want to keep this brief because uh, my night vision is completely gone. Um, it's been quite a night up to now, there's a bit of thunderstorms happening over the hills on land but uh, out at sea it seems to be fairly clear. Um, clouds are building all around but uh, we can still see the moon up there which is a good sign. Uh, we've still got about a, a knot of current against us, even though we've moved sort of into the shallows a little bit. And uh, so far, so good. Um, expected to get there by about five o'clock in the morning. We're doing two hour rolling shifts between me and Arenka. We've decided to let the kids off the night watches because uh, they've got schooling in the morning and uh, we kind of want them to be a bit fresh. The whole night to go, but um, I'm hoping it's going to be a fairly easy passage. Okay, so we had some thunderstorms behind and a little bit in front, but um, it seems pretty clear where we are. I think we're going to be okay. We're just doing two hours each because um, because it's such an early arrival. If you do two hours each, it means that we kind of can both just about manage schooling tomorrow. That's the plan anyway. The kids have promised us that they're going to do some really good schooling because we let them go on computer games most of the day yesterday. So it's Woody's turn to get up for his watch. How are the thunderstorms? There's a thunderstorm behind over there.
tea time. Get some tea. Um, it's always uh, different navigating by night coming into ports because you're basically navigating by lights rather than uh, landmarks and at the moment we're just rounding a peninsula and trying to pick up the uh, port and starboard lights which in this part of the world is different to Europe whereas we've got to keep the greens on our left and the reds on our right as we come in and in Europe it's the other way around so there's two systems there's Isla B and Isla A and this is Isla B this is Mothership, Mothership, over. So it's an average normal day on Mothership. We've just arrived after about day and a night long passage. It was pretty nice. It was a bit rocky. Uh, everyone's in a bad mood because it's a Monday. We're doing school. Uh, we're in this new marina. I'm planning to explore after school. I woke up at six so I could get on with school. And it's just like a nice day at school. As you can see. to go over and find our berth in the marina. So it's been quite an early start this morning. We've got our fuel, so now we're going to go to our berth. Ready? Right, so I try not to turn it on then, if I don't have to, I try not to turn it on. The bound thrust don't keep it screwed. Well, I won't put it down at all, but it's... Down there, right? There's a there. Right there. So the boat is pretty dirty, everything is like a bit everywhere because it's going on the passage, we don't really think about doing things. Uh, so, bye. As you can see, here's mum making toast with. Blueberry jam. <laughs> we go upstairs. We can see. Stay tuned for the next episode, and we get to explore the amazing city of Cartagena. GoPro, turn off. Thanks for watching and especially thanks to our patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to become part of the Patreon family then follow the link in the description below or just put Mothership Adrift Patreon and I'll take you to the right place. We would really love to hear from you so if you'd like to leave comments then go to our Facebook page or Instagram or even to our Patreon page where you can connect to us immediately. 
thanks for watching and thanks for subscribing and don't forget we have another channel which is dedicated to boat maintenance called Mothership Maintenance. So it'd be great if you subscribe to that too. Thank you. Right.